Tonight, LSU's perfect season came to an end in Gainesville. We'll take you through the tough one. And we'll look at some of what we learned in the defeat and how the Tigers are looking forward as they welcome number two Georgia into Tiger Stadium this Saturday. All that and more, the fifth quarter starts right now. Welcome to the fifth quarter. She's Madeline Adams. I'm Lily Fontenot. And LSU fell to 5-1 and one and fell out of the top ten after a deflating defeat at Florida. Yeah, let's take you back to the Swamp at, on Saturday. All right, LSU with the ball first. Joe Burrow fakes it to Nick Brosette, then launches it to his favorite target, Justin Jefferson, for a 38-yard reception. Man, the Tigers looked like they were going to get things going. And then Nick Brosette, of course, finishes it in. Four-yard touchdown run. Tigers drawing first blood right away. Then Florida marches down the field, and then Pirin takes it one yard to get into the paint, even to even up the score. Then this started happening a whole lot. Joe Burrow was sacked five times by the end of the game after a Cole Tracy field goal. Felipe Franks answers with a three-yard TD pass to Stevens, making it 14-10 advantage Gators. Tracy and a Nick Brosette TD would add another 10 points to the Tigers' score, making it 19-14 after a failed two-point conversion. But then here come the Gators again. Franks chunks this one down the field to get Gators in prime scoring position. And then a little Philly special for you. Felipe Franks gets down to the one-yard line. Gators would finish it off, making it 2019 Florida after a failed two-point conversion. Then Joe Burrow throws his first interception of the season. And guess what? It's a pick six at the complete wrong time. LSU fans not expecting that. After he's really been solid in high-pressure situations all season, Ben Burrow to end the game gets sacked from his blind side again. That left side of the O-line showing some weakness there. Gators pull off the upset in Gainesville. Tigers drop to number 12 in the polls. The loss is a disappointing outcome for the Tigers, who had worked their way up to number 5 in the country after two victories over top 10 opponents. The loss showcased that, even for top teams in college football, when it isn't your day, it isn't your day. And for more, we go to Anna Jane Howell. After a long night of back and forth, the number five Tigers fell to number 22 Florida Gators. Now it's unclear which issues specifically led to the Tigers' first loss of the season, but between penalties, sacks, and turnovers, it was a rough night for the Bayou Bengals in the swamp. They kept on converting. They made some big plays. Uh, many times when we made plays on offense, uh, we had some penalties and shot ourselves in the foot. Long runs, especially that last drive when we go ahead, you know, I thought we was going to win the football game. I thought our defense was going to stop them. We couldn't stop them. Quarterback Joe Burrow did get stopped in the 27-19 loss. He was picked off by the Florida defense twice in the fourth quarter and suffered five sacks throughout the game. Um, I might have held it a little long too, a couple times, but you know, we'll have to, I'll have to look at it on film. There were a lot of things that went wrong today that we could have prevented. The Tigers received penalty after penalty and just couldn't seem to execute. You know, I, I thought we came out ready to play. Um, we, we had the right stuff coming out. Um, might have lost our edge as the game continued to uh, as the game continued to progress. We just put ourselves in, in a bad second down situation. Um, and when we do that, I mean, it's, it's tough to play from behind the sticks, like I've said before. Ultimately, Coach O said the blame does not belong to any of the players. Put it on me. It's always on my fault. Give them the credit when they win. It's always on me when we lose. I'm the boss, and I've got to get them better. That's it. The Tigers won't have much time to recover. Georgia, Mississippi State, then Alabama will all be headed to Baton Rouge. Now, all those upcoming home games I mentioned against Georgia, Mississippi State, and Bama will likely all be ranked matchups with those teams currently sitting at numbers 2, 24, and 1 in the AP poll, respectively. Guys? Thanks, Anna Jane. Now, as Anna Jane mentioned, LSU's offensive line struggled, to put it mildly, against Florida's stout defensive front. The Tigers allowed an uncharacteristic five sacks, including one leading to a fumble early in on the game and a, on a promising drive. Despite fans calling out the O-line, Tiger star Nick Brosette was a little more reluctant to do so. I don't, I don't know what you want me to say, but I'm not about to throw my offensive line under the bus. That, that was probably the best round of the game, though. Yeah, I, mean, I think they played well the whole game, so we just going to keep working and we're going to be all right. Uh, I just know we had we had somebody had to step up, and uh, I, I feel like it, it had to be me. 
because I wanted to lead us on offense. And, uh, you know, we just got to keep pushing. We're going to be all right. Um, we got to just come, come back to work on Monday, uh, see what we did wrong, and see what we can get better at, and uh, we're going we to be all right. Now, while the Tigers had their struggles Saturday in the Swamp, sophomore safety Grant Delpit knows that they have the talent and mentality to get back on the right track. Oh, it's definitely huge because, um, you know, that means that we can bounce back anytime. You know, we're not far away from bringing where we want to be at. And um, yeah, so it's not far-fetched and uh, just coming out every week and uh, just playing hard and just, you know, we still got a tough schedule ahead. So that could be also good for us. The Tigers will face number two ranked Georgia Bulldogs this Saturday at 2.30 in Death Valley. The Tigers certainly control their own destiny by having to face what will likely be four more ranked teams before the end of the season. When we return, we'll look at how former Tigers did in the professional sports world. More rundown after this. From the baseball diamond to the football field, former Tiger stars were lighting up the professional sports world this weekend. First, we have Giants wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr., who is known for his ability to make crazy one-handed touchdown catches. Well, yesterday, he made an exciting touchdown against the Panthers, but from the opposite end of the ball. Let's take a look. Snap to Manning, who throws a lateral pass to Beckham, but oh wait, what's this? Beckham throws this 57-yard pass to Saquon Barkley for the Giants' first touchdown of the game. OBJ finished the night with two touchdowns, that passing one, as well as one on the ground. However, even with that exciting trick play, the Giants still came short to Carolina, losing 31-33. to The Giants are now 1-4 and four for the season. Moving on from football to baseball, another Tiger who had an impressive performance this weekend was Astros' third baseman, Alex Bregman. In Game 2 of the ALDS playoffs, Bregman hit this home run bomb. This was his second homer in two straight days. Houston would go on to defeat Cleveland 3-1 to in Game 2 of the series. And today the Astros were able to clinch the series after defeating the Indians 11-3, to sweeping them three games to none. Next, Houston will face the winner of the Yankees-Red Sox series in the American, Ch American League Championship. Now, before you can get to the pros, you got to get to college. And before you get to college, the recruitment process for collegiate athlete hopefuls can be extremely strenuous for both recruiter and the recruitee. With college golf seasons in full swing, pardon the pun, Tiger TV sports reporter Megan Bales decided to give us a closer look at what life is like for those hoping to play golf at the NCAA level. College golf prospects put in an average of eight hours a day dedicated to training before they even get to the collegiate level. But it doesn't always pay off. Despite the dedication to the game, if the scores aren't low enough, the coach won't give your golfer a second glance. There's so much rejection because you might be a really good player and have great potential and work really hard, but coaches want to see the scores now, and you might not have the scores now, but you work hard and you'll get there. Most train by repeating their swings for hours for various clubs, playing full rounds of golf, competing in tournaments, and working out to increase their strength on the golf course. Day, I have to play four or five hours a day at least just to you know, keep up. Because it is strenuous on the athlete and their education, many pursue online or homeschooling to accommodate their athletic schedule better. For about four hours, um, eat lunch for about 30 minutes, and then I go back out for another four to five hours and practice putting, chipping, each for about two hours, and then I hit balls for about an hour. The time required to succeed in this sport does not stop those from pursuing their dreams of becoming a collegiate golfer. To be seen by a coach, golfers must participate in tournaments year-round to improve their numbers and show consistency. For, for golf, I can tell you it takes a really Strong Regardless drive. of the dedication or time put into this sport, golf does not follow the normal recruiting process. Until signing day, these athletes must continue to practice for hours to ensure their future spot on the roster. Megan Bales, Tiger TV Sports. Thank you, Megan. For those wondering, National Signing Day, the first day where players can sign their letters of intent to schools, is February 6th. When we return, we celebrate Columbus Day the only way we know how. More rundown after this. Welcome back to the show, and as we previously mentioned, it's Columbus Day. Now, the morality of some of Columbus's actions are definitely questionable, yes. But we thought all LSU fans could come together and celebrate this holiday with this clip here. Take a look. Good afternoon. Just want to remind everybody that it's Columbus Day, that uh, all those of you that know Italians and like Italians are the people that might venture onto a ship and travel to explore and find new lands. 
uh, this is your day. So uh, um, it's not St. Patty's Day. So that's a different day entirely. All right, LSU has definitely been blessed with some coaches that give us sound bites for years. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at TTV underscore sports and on LSUNow.com. Good night, Tigers. Thanks for watching.